Here to share with us his outlook for America and the world, Goldman Sachs chief economist Jan Hatzius. Jan, good morning to you. Good morning. How are Jan, you? Jan, a couple of weeks ago, David Rubenstein of the Carlyle Group was here, and he told us that as he travels around the world, and I don't need to remind you how, how much David Rubenstein gets around and the kind of circles he runs in, people kept asking him about the fiscal cliff. We're talking about people in China, people in the Middle East, people in Latin America, people in Europe. In your opinion, what happens to the global economy if we can't sort out the fiscal cliff, say, in time? So if we can't sort it out and it's not just, uh, you know, spilling into 2013 for a few days, uh, but, but it's actually something more, more serious than that, you actually get a, a period, you know, of several weeks or, you know, let alone months in which uh, you actually do get a very large amount of fiscal drag on top of all the things that are, that are already likely to happen in the baseline. Uh, and you have all the uncertainty, then the U.S. Uh, with a very high probability goes back into recession. And then, of course, that has spillovers uh, into the rest of the world as well. Uh, Europe is in a recession. Uh, we think that probably uh, that recession, even in the absence of a full cliff event in the U.S., uh, lasts uh, through the first half of 2000. Uh, and 13, so it'd be pretty bad news uh, if, that, if that did happen. What happens to treasuries, the dollar, and U.S. stocks if that happens? Well, I think stocks, uh, you know, obviously wouldn't uh, wouldn't like it, uh, and uh, I think treasury yields uh, you would you would get a further to one percent. Uh, excuse me. To one percent on the ten-year. I think that's possible. I mean, my guess would be that uh, it doesn't go go down quite as far, but uh, but you know, clearly, uh, you would increase the amount of uh, of fiscal drag uh, in an economy that's. Uh, you know, only growing uh, somewhere around two percent to begin with. So, uh, so, so you, you know, you clearly get a decline. Well, Jan, uh, we're, we're, we're framing we're framing all say. of this in very negative terms. The <laughs> what if we fall off, so to speak, the fiscal cliff? But that's not the way that you see it. I've just read your global economic outlook for 2013 and beyond, and you seem to be somewhat optimistic about the prospects for the global economy right. and for asset performance. Walk us through some of that. Well, I was going with your premise, and your premise was a very negative one. Oh, no, there's the no question. I, I acknowledge that I, that I asked the what-if question. So let, let's take it back. Let's assume that we do reach a deal on the fiscal cliff and that the European crisis continues to be contained, as it appears to be for the time being. What happens? I think in that case, uh, you know, the first the first quarter or two of 2013 uh, is still pretty weak. Uh, I think you're, you're still going to see, you know, sub two percent growth in the in the U.S. and uh, even that sub two percent growth uh, is probably uh, not a, f a fair representation of what's really going on because you're getting some special uh, special factor boosts from the the bounce back from Hurricane Sandy. Uh, the bounce back from the 2012 droughts. So it's a pretty weak economy in early 2013. Uh, but then I think as the year progresses, we start to see a gradual acceleration. We have 2.5% growth in the second half of the year. Uh, and we expect further acceleration into 2014 and 2015. And the reason is simply that the private sector of the U.S. economy is actually doing pretty well and it's getting better. And the the balance sheet adjustment uh, and that, that, that we've seen over the, the past few years uh, seems to have progressed pretty far. Uh, and if the degree of fiscal drag slows down later in 2013 and into 2014, uh, I think the economy uh, should, do, uh, should do quite a bit better. Uh, in terms of asset market performance, you know, our expectations mirror that as well. We expect the, uh, the asset markets generally to do better, the, the equity markets to do better. Uh, in 2013, uh, we've got sort of 10 to 15 percent uh, price price returns in the in the major markets. Uh, not a huge amount of difference between uh, the uh, advanced economies and the and the and the emerging world, uh, but you know, pretty good a pretty good environment. But a lot of that, uh, you know, could be knocked, of course, if if we if we get a worse outcome. Uh, in the U.S. over the next few months. Well, Jan, what is the biggest headwind for the U.S. economy to your forecast next year? Fiscal drag, clearly. I mean, we've got, uh, you know, something like one and a half percentage points uh, of fiscal contraction, uh, even in the, the baseline. Our baseline is that the payroll tax cut expires, that the upper income uh, Bush tax cuts expire, 
uh, and then there are a few sort of odds and ends that uh, when you when you add them all up, you're talking one and a half percentage points or a bit, or a little more, uh, and that uh, that clearly is the biggest drag. If it wasn't for that fiscal drag, uh, I think we'd be looking at above trend growth uh, right now. Uh, Jan, you talk uh, to this point. You talk about the great race between public spending and private spending. Why are you confident that if there is a fiscal drag on the public side, that we will see this private spending accelerate to the point where it overcomes the drag effect of, uh, you know, a reduction in, in federal spending? Well, we're, we're, we're not confident on that. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the drag from the, from the public sector side, you know, also shows up in, in a lot of the private sector spending numbers, especially consumption. Uh, what, 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 what I mean by the, by the expansion in the private sector is that if you take out the, uh, the, the, the sort of contractionary effects of what's going on in the public sector, we would be seeing uh, a yeah, probably somewhat above trend consumer spending growth rates, uh, certainly above trend uh, residential investment, almost certainly above trend uh, uh, business fixed investment. Um, so, so it's more a conceptual device of kind of talking about uh, you know, the healing going on in the private sector uh, and the headwinds uh, that are coming from the public sector. Jan, in terms of Fed policy, do you expect Chairman Bernanke to increase the size of its asset purchase program going into next year? We're expecting an increase in the, uh, in the pace of balance sheet expansion from the current $40 billion per month to something like $85 billion a month. And that basically implies that the pace of asset purchases of uh, uh, longer-term treasuries and mortgage-backed securities stays at the current $85 billion uh, number or somewhere very, very close to that. That's our expectation for the December FOMC meeting. Uh, Jan, Bill Dudley of the New York Fed was speaking just a little while ago, in fact, and said that the Fed at the appropriate time, we hear this all the time from Fed policymakers, mm -hmm. will take the punch bowl away. What is the punch bowl right now? When Bill Dudley talks about the punch bowl specifically, what's he referring to? I mean, I think what he's talking about is, you know, broadly the, the amount of monetary accommodation in the, in the system, the low level of, uh, of interest rates, uh, you know, zero rates at the, at the front end, uh, the asset purchases um, that, that are still ongoing and, and the, the very large size of the, the Fed's I mean, balance sheet. And so would you, eventually sorry, that's going to have to be unwound, of course. W I know clearly, but would you, would you define, let's say, taking the punch bowl away as raising the Fed funds target? Is that as far as we have to go before we talk about taking the punch bowl away? I think there are some steps on the, on the way to raising the, the funds rate target. You know, the first one, of course, would be uh, to stop QE, uh, which you know we we don't expect to happen for uh, another couple of years, frankly. But but uh, that I think would be the first one. The next one would be to allow runoff from the balance sheet as maturing securities, uh, you know, which are currently being reinvested in the markets are no longer reinvested. Uh, and then you'd probably get some changes in the in the statement, and only then would you get the first hike in the funds rate. And only after that, uh, you know, if um, uh, if at Jan. all. Uh, only after that would you get uh, sales of securities. We have to wrap it there, Jan. So great to see you and thank you for joining us here on Market Makers. Jan Hatzius, he's the chief economist at Goldman Sachs.